Hi guys, welcome to devlog number six of the Shadows Lengthen. Today I'm going to be showing the object exit system that allows navigation meshes to string together. But first, thank you to my patrons. Without you guys, this project would be dead in the water. Okay, let's jump right into it. So here you can see a single terrain block represented by this little textured object. And then there's this little blue vertical thing, and that's the exit object. Now the player, as they move through the world, you can see it tracks with the player every so often, every point on that grid. It's 25 meters per point. If I exit a terrain block, it'll traverse the edge of the terrain block, sort of tracking towards the last known place or the closest distance to travel to get to the player. So if I go along the north side of the block here, it'll travel there as well. This is using a simple limit location in the Blender game engine. Now, if I actually expand this out and I show all the terrain blocks, and now I run the game, you can see once I leave the terrain block and enter a new terrain block, a new vertical blue exit object will now track the player. So in this way, each block will track where the player is within 25 meters. Why is this necessary? Well, that's because a navigation mesh will be used for the monster to find the player. But because these blocks are randomly generated, that means they will be linked together in random ways uh, procedurally by algorithm. So that means that these blocks need to be separate, but there needs to be a piece of information that connects these navigation meshes together. So the monster all the way on the left, or the enemy character, will be able to track towards the player that's all the way on the right, across multiple navigation mesh systems. That's what this is currently doing. So if the player was on block number one, it would navigate using path star, A star, pathfinding, to that exit object. Once it had arrived at the first exit object on the far left, then it would update to the middle block and say, okay, now exit object number two is my current target. And obviously you can see this target's updating, so the navigation mesh of the monster will also update with these positions. Now, right now, all three blocks are tracking the player. In the final version, the only the blocks where the player has just left or is currently occupying will be checking where the player position is. Once a monster occupies that area, the, the, the navigation mesh will essentially no longer track the player. And this is also going to kind of make it seem more realistic, as if the monster doesn't know where you are, but it provides a, a guide or at least a leash. So if you stray too far from the monster, the monster will have a way to get back to you. And... Unlike most open world games where if you leave the sphere of influence of an enemy character and they just forget about you, this game, there's only one enemy character or maybe two or three, but they will always be looking for you and they will be coming after you. It's a very horrifying thought to be able to know that you can never truly escape, but you can only hide for a short amount of time and you need to keep running. And so this game plays off that idea that you can't truly escape. And you can run as far as you want in any direction, and it, you may buy yourself time or uh, stave off the ed inevitable, but ultimately, this is about creating a horrifying experience where the monster will always chase you and always look for you, and escape is essentially futile. Anyway, it's not futile, you'll be able to fight off the monster and fun stuff like that, but it raises questions of how horror games function and how artificial intelligence in games, especially horror, a lot of times is pretty lacking, and um, this is meant to address that, that gap. This is meant to make a monster that truly knows where you, you are or will truly hunt you no matter how far you go, even if you jump in a car and drive away, which will be obviously something you can do in the game. Anyway, my patrons, you guys have access to this file, and you can test it and see how it works. You can ask me questions on my Discord or my Patreon, and for everyone else, um, this is up on YouTube. This is my second devlog that I put up. Um, Subscribe if you want. I, I, doesn't, I don't know if it works or helps or not, but if you're interested in the project or you're curious, you can support me and uh, get access to these files and see how they work. Uh, thank you guys very much for your support, and I'll see you in the next devlog.